What else? No, don't answer that. <laughs> morning and welcome to life on the moose hey if the next 30 minutes doesn't leave you completely fulfilled and satisfied i'll give you your money back <laughs> okay what we have going on today is we're gonna put steel on this roof the last episode we got the osb up there with the help of the fascia that we just left a little high because it's going to be high anyway and then the osb just slid down against it held it in place it wasn't too bad at all so let me show you what we're going to do with the steel I just put this temporary block down here with an offset about one inch. So that's going to be the overhang of the steel off of the roof. One inch overhang, that'll be fine with this, with this pitch. So the steel will just rest against this. We'll screw it down as we go. Hopefully it'll work as good as it's working in my brain right now. So we'll see. So first thing we have to do is get tar paper up there. So that's gonna be kind of a bear because I can't just get up there and walk and push it to one end and cut it off. So I'm gonna cut it into 20 foot sections, which is the length of the roof deck, and then staple it as we go. I hope it works out. I think it'll work out. Well, let's get to work. Okay, to streamline this a little bit, I just have two 10 footers right here. Don't have to measure it. That's obviously 20 feet for the deck. And then I'm just gonna cut it off as square as I can. On this tarp, it'll keep it clean. key right here keep it from unrolling if it doesn't unroll then it won't fall off the roof like it did last time
tar papers on. It took me about two and a half hours to do that. Normal roof, I think I could have done that in about a half an hour, but because I'm monkeying around on ladders, it takes a long time. All right, let's put up some steel. Before I put tar paper on the other side, I'm just gonna start putting steel on this side since the ladder's here, the ladder's up, it's tied down. I also tied it on the very top. I'm not sure you can see that. I have it, a rope going over the other side and tied to the framing of the building. So that ladder can't go anywhere. So I left about enough space over there for a sheet of steel. So hopefully that works out. What I normally don't do is pre-drill the holes for the steel, but I'm gonna do that today. It's gonna make life a lot easier once I'm up there. So I went ahead and I measured three inches from the very bottom and then every two feet from then on and then about three inches from the very top. All right, it always makes me a little nervous when I poke a hole in perfectly good steel, but I think it's gonna work out well. I think it's really my best option with what I have going on. All right, let's go poke some holes in some steel. I clamped the other end of that in a couple spots. Maybe you can see those little green clamps over there. But they're pretty strong clamps. Uh, it'll keep everything from sliding around. Shouldn't be anything really making it slide around. Off to a great start. My drill bit broke. Come on. Okay, let's try this again. It's a little shorter. Let's see if it works. is kicking up which isn't great so what I'm gonna do is I have this little foam pipe wrap that I'm gonna put at the end of this first sheet that I'm gonna put up there and that's for when I slide this up the roof I don't want it to catch on the edges of that tar paper and tear that and rip that all up I don't know if that's gonna stay on there or not I found that it's a lot easier to carry these things when you kind of bend them up into almost a stovepipe, they stay a lot more rigid that way. I don't know if that's going to stay on during that process or not. This is all a learning curve for me. So we'll see what happens. Let's, let's try to get this thing up there. My phone's ready to die. My, I forgot my charger. What else? No, don't answer that. <laughs>
Well, right after my camera rudely died yesterday, I did get that first piece of metal on the roof. Two days of solid sunshine ahead of us. I'd really like to get that steel on, done, and off the plate. Hey, I wanted to show you something. I don't know if you can see that. Right, right in there. Snow on the mountains. Yeah, it's just the third week in September. Snow up in the mountains. I think they're about 3,000 feet higher than we are here. But it's coming. It's coming. It just seemed like, what, two episodes ago? It was sweltering hot. But we do what we have to do. All right, well, let's get some more steel on that roof. Make some progress today. We're making progress. I wanted to point a couple things out. One is how these seams match up. So each panel has a side with a little flat edge on it versus the other side, which has nothing. So the flat side goes down first and then the other one goes on top of that. This is the screw. It's a wide thread screw that you're supposed to use when you're using plywood or OSB. If you're using solid wood, it has a narrower thread on it, but it's fatter, like I said, for the OSB, plywood, any of the wood products. Okay, we got them all up but one, <laughs> even those two dusty ones. Not sure how they got so dusty, but they'll wash off when it rains and snows and whatnot. I got to cut a piece, 
cut about one rib off of one and then I'll have enough over there. So what am I gonna do with my ladder? I'm gonna move it and set it on top of the steel very gently. I'm going to I'm gonna put this pipe foam insulation on the edges of that ladder, on the sides of that ladder where it touches the roof. So hopefully I won't scratch that steel when I'm up there. We'll see how it works. We're making progress. 1120, heck, I'm happy with it. Look at that bluebird day. You know, maybe we should take five minutes and just look at the view. Why not? Okay, that's enough. Okay, that worked well. Okay, right here is where I have to make my cut. There's a couple of ways to do that. One is with a skill saw with the right blade, or I've used a wrong blade backwards, a wood blade put on backwards I've used, and which works okay. Or you can use like a tin snips or something along those lines. And they do have attachments to your drill that automatically will snip it. Um, I don't have any of that stuff. I do have a tin snips, but I think I'm going to score it. I have done that in the past, and it's worked pretty good. Basically put a deep scratch into it right along this groove here so I have something to cut against. And then once I get that scratch, that score the whole way, then I can carefully bend it. And it should crack off right at that spot. At least that's what it's done in the past. Let's hope it works again. This side's wrapped up. Glad to have that done. That piece fits nicely, but 
I ran into a little problem. <laughs> Poor planning on my part, I guess. Let me show you what's going on. So I have this eave trim right here. This fits around the eave. This side goes to the outside. This one is on top of the roof. And that little lip over there is supposed to fit over one of those ribs. So let me show you what the issue is. That rib right here is exactly where I'm supposed to be nailing that eave trim. So that means I should have either made my roof two inches smaller or I need to order eave trim that's two inches wider. At this point, I don't think I'm gonna make my roof smaller. <laughs> Gotta order some more trim. That's all right, we'll use that other stuff somehow, somewhere. Well, good morning, another bluebird day. We're back at it. Look at that. Gosh. Are you ready? Are you ready to drop everything and buy a piece of land in the middle of nowhere and build a cabin on it? I thought so. <laughs> okay, we're making some progress on this roof. I got smart and I'm unrolling the top two as I go. And I put steel on one side and then I roll for the next section. So yeah, I could have done that over there. I would have saved myself about three or four ladder moves. But you know, slow but sure, we're learning. Speaking of learning, I wanted to point something out. These screws. So if you notice, there's a metal washer on top, kind of a cupped metal washer, and then underneath a piece of rubber, a little rubber washer. So when you screw these in, you want to get to the point where that rubber washer has expanded just so it is wider than the steel, than the metal washer. So that rubber washer gets splayed out a little bit, but you don't want to overdo it. Because if you over tighten it, you're either going to strip the wood underneath or you're going to ruin that piece of rubber. Either way, no bueno. So word to the wise, be careful if you do this sort of thing. be the only one up here having fun so I thought I'd bring you guys up here and 
let you experience a little bit what I experience. Look at that view. Not bad, huh? As far as the screw patterns on the steel, I did look at a manufacturer's website and this is how they recommended it. Every one per flat, except when you're around the overlap, which is this one right here. You can see that overlapping edge right there. It's in the shadows, but yeah, that's the overlapping edge. So one on each side of that and then one per flat. I'm glad that's done. <laughs> but now there's probably one more thing, even a little bit more difficult, and that is the ridge cap that's going to go on the whole thing. Probably means a lot of ladder moving. Other than that, I don't know how else to do it, but I'll figure it out one way or another. I'm going to still put wood fascia against my barge boards on the outside. So I don't have that with me. So I can't put the eave trim on anyway. So the only thing I'm concerned about right now is getting that ridge cap on. That'll be fun. Did you bring your ladder? Because if you could get on that end and I could get on this end, it would make life a lot. What's that? Oh, you didn't bring your ladder? All right. Well, you just stay sitting then. It's better that way, really. I'll get up on the roof. You stay in your living room or wherever you are and just keep watching. It'll be fine. I'm sure it'll be fine. Okay, let's get to work. Here's the ridge cap I'm going to use. Obviously, that's the underside. It's white. Top side is green. So I have this sealant tape that I'm going to use. It's a foam expanding tape, and it expands up to, I think, an inch. So I'm going to run that tape just inside this lip right here. And this final lip right here, right before the seam, before the fold, that's where I'm going to put my screws. So I marked my line. Here's my overhang. They recommend at least six inches. I have about seven and a half right there. So good to go. So this one gets the sealant tape on the whole thing. And this one obviously just to the line. The rest is going to be overlapping. end of the ladder still got that half to do so I am able to reach over the ridge carefully of course and drill holes have to pre-drill all of them because it's just too much of a bear trying to start that screw even though they are self-starting just a little too tough to do up here all right there we have it I'd like to show you more of me working, but it's tough when I'm balancing up here, holding a camera and a drill in one hand, and I'm just trying to be safe. Let's get this done.
You'll notice I did not screw the very last one in the ridge cap because I have my eave trim to put on yet once I get my cedar fascia put on. All right, that's all she wrote. This thing's watertight. Well, kind of. Look at that. Oh, man, am I happy that's finished. Well, if someone says to you, you can't put a roof on a 12-12 pitch all by yourself. Now you can say, sure I can. I saw this one guy, Patrick, do it on Life on the Moose. It's like the best show I've ever seen. Look at that. Boy, am I happy that's finished. I don't know if I'd really recommend it. <laughs> you know what can be done. You just gotta be super careful where you put your feet, how you hold your hands, tying down everything. It's, it's stressful. Okay, what are we gonna do next time? I don't know. What do you wanna do? What do you wanna do next time? Just write in the comments and whatever comment has the most will do that. Well, I can't guarantee it. We may put up some OSB in the sides. We may cut those dead trees down and clean this mess up around here. I don't know yet for sure. I'm happy it's finished. I'm happy you guys are watching. Really am. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for hitting that like button. Yeah, let me know what you think. Let me know if you tackle this or if you ever have tackled this by yourself. I'd be interested to know what you guys think and what you've done. All right, well, I'm out of here. Thanks again. We'll see you next week. Take care of yourselves. We'll see you soon.